Good afternoon and welcome to today's Digital Dealer webinar sponsored by Notion. Today's presentation is titled, Where do you stand with your expenses? We're excited to introduce Sanjay Parker, founder and CEO of Notion, and Zach Johnson, founder and CEO of Calyx. We'll be hosting a Q&A session at the end of this presentation, so please feel free to enter your questions during this time. That being said, please welcome Sanjay and Zach. Hi guys, thanks for joining. I realize it is the last day of the month, but we actually thought what well, better time to think about your expenses as you're focused on your uh, last day of revenue in June. So thanks for joining us for our uh, webinar today. We're really going to help you understand how to manage your expenses and our view on why expenses are so important to profitability. Um, thanks for joining again. I'm Sanjay Parker and I've spent uh, most of my career working with Fortune 100 companies like Eli Lilly, Ernst & Young, Xerox, Delta. And it's amazing, even though those companies are really focused on financials, there was so much opportunity to save money and to more effectively use um, things like advertising spend and outside services. So when I started working with Zach a couple of years ago, I was fascinated by his role. Um, Zach has worked uh, recently with Tesla as a uh, senior manager worked at UPS, Cardinal Health, Cleveland Clinic, and he's really focused uh, with his Six Sigma uh, black belt uh, in lean operations and manufacturing, mm -hmm. just really focused on cutting out unnecessary expenses. He's literally saved companies tens of millions of dollars over the past several years. So when we partnered together to uh, create a new offering for Notion, um, I was pretty excited. Today, though, we are going to teach you guys how to do a lot of this stuff because we think it's so important. And so by the end of this webinar, you're going to be able to do a few things, uh, hopefully really well. So you'll be able to learn how to use NADA benchmarks to uh, see how your dealership stands against others of the same brand. So it's kind of using the, the wisdom of the crowd, right? How are the best dealerships doing and how are you performing against those benchmarks? I think it's a great way to really see where you stand. You'll be able to identify methods that will allow you to quickly discover overages in your primary expense categories. And we'll talk about what those are, but I think you know, most dealerships, most businesses, they have hundreds and hundreds of expenses per month. And it doesn't make sense to immediately go to everyone. So we show you how to find the high level categories so you can drill down based on your variances against benchmarks uh, for leading companies in your same space. And also you'll be able to recognize uh, Six Sigma practices and methodologies to help you uh, isolate and control the expenses over time. So when you go through and do your expense reviews, you'll find a lot of room usually for reduction. But what happens is over time, if you're not using these processes to keep on top of the expenses, in six months to a year, you'll have a lot of uh, unnecessary expenses again and your profitability decreases. So we'll show you some methodologies to, to keep on top of that before the end of um, the webinar today. I like to start uh, and maybe talk about some stories. So it's great to tell you guys why this is important and show you how to do it. But I think some things that may resonate are some of the stories that Zach has actually dealt with at dealerships. I'm gonna turn it over to him to just uh, share those stories with you at this time. Great, thank you very, very much. Okay. so. You guys are all going to recognize, uh, and I'm sure you have your own experiences and stories from these same categories, but one of the ones that we like to talk about specifically within dealerships um, is the true cost of, of policy, policy cost, right? And I'm not just talking just the cost of policy. We're also talking about unapplied time, uh, bad debt write-off, um, um, inventory shortages, anything where it's basically you're having to do essentially what is a write-off, right? So... Uh, right now, the example that we're like to use is, let's say your dealership is averaging about 3% in your operating profit. So for every $100 that you're selling, you're, you're earning about $3 in, uh, in operating profit. So the example we use here is, let's say you write off $3,000 worth of policy cost, right, for, for a variety of customers, whether it's a new car, service, parts, et cetera. Um, what does it actually cost you in, in sales to basically get back to zero to recover those, those, that, those dollars you've, been, you've written off? So $3,000 at 3%, that is roughly $100,000 that you have to make in sales to regain to get back to that, that $3,000 covered. 
Um, it's typically when dealerships uh, will look at that and think it's just three thousand dollars, but the impact is absolutely tremendous. And so we do, you know, in an in industry that's called revenue equivalence, um, and something we'll talk about a couple of times throughout uh, throughout the presentation. But it's one of those ones where it's it's not just a dollar uh, that you're writing off. It's much much more that you have to do to recover that that amount. So. Um, Talk, you know, identifying the policy costs, making sure it's, it's controlled, it's contained, you have a good process in place for your team to manage that. Um, it's kind of a necessary evil, um, but it's something that has to be managed and, and managed usually daily, um, weekly, monthly. So that's a good one. Um, printing expenses, and it may not seem very exciting, um, but uh, second only to schools, dealerships are our number two in the amount of paper that is consumed printed and used. Uh, even if you're on doing digital um, scanning, you're still printing repair orders and, um, and F and I printing and documents is not just the printer that the paper that you're buying, right? And not just printing, you know, reports and so forth. Um, this is everything that you're printing across the dealership. And then in many cases, it's hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of pages of paper being printed, whether it's through a printer, through a DMS printer, if it's a Reynolds or a CDK or other DMS, or through the copier. Um, if you take a look at this and uh, give you a recent example, looking at uh, rates, there is a rate that you pay to print black and white. There's a rate that you pay to print in color. And in a particular DMS, if you print a black and white piece of paper through a, uh, a through a printer that's designated as color, it counts as color. And it may be three to five times the amount per page uh, to print that piece of paper. Um, and that accumulates you know, if you get three or four F and I managers in one one store, um, it, it adds up tremendously, right? So it may not seem the you know the exciting thing to look at, um, but the last example we used here, we found over a hundred thousand dollars annualized in essentially looking at where we bought the ink from, um, how the contracts were negotiated, where you were printing, whether you're printing to a printer um, or printing to a copier. Um, limiting the amount of color we're printing, limiting the amount of black and white we're printing and so forth and seeing what we could digitize and so forth. So again, it's one of those hidden expenses that, that is huge and impactful and is uh, unfortunately pretty de detailed and usually agreement and contract laden to get through a well worth the effort. Um, next one here, DMS integration fees. So the example I want to give here about a month ago, working with a dealer, um, it's been there for a couple, two years or so, current general manager and office managers uh, there, uh, going through a, a deep dive in the expense review, found a fee, had been occurring for uh, four years, from 2016, $268 a month for an integration fee for a valid service that they had four years ago that they no longer have. Um, they used it for a few months, um, went to a different platform, didn't use it but didn't take the time, um, previous management didn't take the time to actually contact the vendor and cancel the integration. So that $268 per month, 48 months, that's uh, $13,000 that they paid um, and basically uh, for, for, for not much of anything, quite frankly, mm -hmm. but 268 every single month, right? And so you're, you're still gonna make sales to, to compensate for that. $650,000 in sales <laughs> if you're at a 2% margin. Yep. So. That's it's absolutely impactful. So all those little things add up. It's it's really tremendous. Um, the last one I'd like to cover, and this is this sort of spans any industry that that I've I've experienced, whether it's been from um, supply chain, logistics, uh, dealerships, et cetera, um, healthcare system, is overtime. And this is actually within your operation, right? So if you have an operation that has people, your chances are you're going to have overtime. And I, of course, this this varies whether it's you know it's holiday season, it's um, all kinds of different seasonalities and things that occur for overtime. But it's more about managing um, what I like to call time adherence, right? So if an employee's time is to come in at nine o'clock and leave at six o'clock uh, and they have to take a half an hour break, are they coming in at 8.40, clocking in, taking a lunch and not clocking out um, and then leaving on time? But the reality is they've, they've already accumulated maybe 20 to, you know, minutes to an hour's worth of time that they were on break not working, but getting paid for it. Um, you do this over the course of a week. Next thing you know, Friday rolls, rolls along. They've had lunch every single day, but didn't clock out and came in a few minutes early every day. Next thing you know, one o'clock on Friday, they're on overtime already and you still need them to stay. Um, 
I will tell you this across the board, I have not seen anything less than six figures in savings um, by managing this um, process. And this is essentially keeping your overtime to um, basically to a realistic minimum, right? Being clear about your policies, clear about time cards, um, clear about um, start and finish times, and basically be having a more efficient operation. But it really falls upon um, you and your team managing uh, overtime. Um, it's just one of the easiest ways to, to help manage spend. And it's, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars easily every year. Wow. So hopefully that's helpful. And I'll turn this over to uh, Sanjay here for a polling question. Thanks, Zach. So at this time, I'd like to um, have my uh, friend Megan uh, send out the poll. And I'd like to ask the question, where do you guys think you stand in terms of your expenses? So you should see the poll on the screen at this point. And go ahead and choose uh, A, if you feel you're totally in control, you've got everything uh, under wraps, and, and that's fine. If, if you feel that way, I think it's great. Hopefully you can still learn something from today's webinar. Uh, choose B, if you have a good handle on it, but you're curious to see how well you're doing, you know, you could probably do better, and I think that's a great position to be in. I think we should always be learning and evolving. Choose C if you think you are pretty sure you could probably use some help. Maybe you've newly uh, taken over a dealership in terms of the financials and you want to make sure that you've uh, got a handle on this. And then if uh, choose D or the last uh, bullet um, radio button, uh, if you feel that your dealership is a money shredding machine, and we've actually seen those, uh, and that's okay. It's a great place to get out of. So uh, go ahead and choose um, those. And Megan, when we get enough responses in, just let's put the results out on the page. I'd like everybody to see where we're at. Okay, this is good. good. So uh, nobody is totally in control. That's great. We're all very humble on this call. Um, looks like 80% of us feel that we've got a good handle on it, but, but you're curious if you can do better. Thank you for joining today. I think you're going to get a lot of value out of this. Uh, and those that could probably use some help, I think that's, that's good as well. You might find that you do have quite a few things in control, but it's always good to see where you stand. I think, you know, we're just reinforcing the title. It's not a very exciting, sexy title, but it's really important in terms of profitability. And that is uh, exciting. Zach's nickname is the Profit Profit. So <laughs> he loves to help companies uh, get profit. So let's go ahead and move on. So we focus on everything we do, uh, we focus on benchmarks, whether it's dealerships, whether it's nonprofits, uh, whether it's any kind of company, we try to find out what's the normative type of spend and profit ratio for that industry, that type of uh, business, and in, in your case, the type of dealership and the brand that you're selling. So there is um, some great data in the NADA uh, 20 benchmark. So we use that as a basis. And if you're an NADA member, you can email them and just say, send me the benchmarks for my brand. So if you're a Chevy dealership, if you're Ford, GM, uh, Nissan, Hyundai, whatever it is, you should be able to get that from NADA as part of your standard membership. We take those benchmarks and we will show you today how to visualize them and compare where you stand because that really helps you uh, quickly expose any variances in which you're over. So it could be items like, you know, variable expenses, personal expenses, you know, fixed costs. Uh, Zach will talk in more detail about that, but you can see at a high level which categories you're over on, and then you can drill down. And then it allows you to really focus on what's important because as we mentioned, there's so many expenses that you have every month. If you can use these benchmarks and the categories, it allows you to quickly laser point onto where you might be over and make those reductions. So I think it's, it's an amazing tool of intelligence to use uh, to get a great start on those benchmarks. And my personal view, and, and Zach believes this as well, that expense reduction, while it's not the most exciting sounding thing, it really is the new gold because as you've seen in the past few months and as we'll continue um, probably you know, for some time and, and more over uh, going forward forever, every dollar that um, you save, it's a lot easier to save money than to make you know, 50 times that or 33 times that, whatever your, your margins are. And it typically is one to 3% yep. in the auto industry. You have to move a lot of, of metal to you know, make that small profit. So expenses are so important. We think that you know, if you save expenses now, as the economy gets better or as you know, car sales get back up, it acts as a multiplicative factor to everything you do. So if you save a little bit now, 
that pays dividends month over month. So I think it's like finding gold. Um, we still think that, and we see many expenses are just too high or not valid. So comparing those expenses to others, to negotiating contracts, again, maybe getting some other uh, bids for services that you use, you can find a lot of money saved there, which is really important. And also we used to say, when I grew up hearing a penny saved is a penny earned, and I think that's really good, good advice. I think when you talk about profit margins and profitability with companies, you know, a penny or a dollar saved is, it's a multi, uh, multiplier. So a dollar saved is like $50 earned because of the power of revenue equivalents where, you know, saving a dollar is like, you know, getting an additional uh, $20 in revenue in, in a lot of cases or $30 or $40, whatever your, your profitability is. So I think it's really important to do that. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Zach. He's going to talk about the key benchmarks we look at when we compare dealerships to NADA, and these are things that you should be doing. He's gonna show you a calculator tool uh, to get, get your benchmarks just by entering data that you've got available to you from your dealership and NADA. And we'll give you this calculator free, just reach out to us at the end, no obligation. It's a great tool just to see where you stand. And then Zach will walk you through the entire process using our uh, Google Data Studio visualizations, which we've created to work with clients, but it really illustrates the whole process so you can kind of understand what you need to do on your side to uh, get to higher profitability. So with that, I'll turn it over to Zach and uh, let him do it. Great, awesome, thank you. Um, okay, so if you, if you can see the presentation here, you see these five elements here, variable personnel, semi-rent, and total fix. It's pretty much all of your expenses, right? So one of the great things about the NADA benchmarks is that they, you have so much data um, that they collect that you've got really, really good example, a really good data that drills down to the line level um, from a total dealership all the way down to uh, by department and by line item in here. So within each one of these, right, you're gonna see, you, you're, you're gonna know the basic ones, right? Advertising is always one of the biggest spends, payroll and anything payroll related, um, your floor plan inventory expense, um, you know, fixed expenses, all those things are really, you'll see these trends amongst uh, dealerships, of course, where those are typically your biggest buckets. Um, but there are a number of things within these categories that we can kind of drill down into. Um, we're going to focus on the high level here, but essentially we'll show you uh, through the, the Data Studio tool how you can drill into those and, and then actually create actions from, from what you find into um, um, expense containment. Let's go on to the next slide here. Um, so I'm going to walk you through, if you haven't done this already, or maybe a, a good basic refresher of how to just manually go through a benchmark um, of your expenses using uh, your profile. Um, all you basically need is the NADA expense uh, benchmark itself, which you can request from them directly. Um, financial statement, typically page two. Um, we'll walk you through our calculator tool and then just the data visualizations that come from the Google Data Studios um, from there. So let's hop on over here to the next one. Okay, so this is, for example, uh, well, not for example, this is the example, for General Motors, um, this is the, sort of the top uh, third, roughly, of an expense profile for this particular brand, right? There's one out there for every single brand manufacturer in the US, um, and you can tell here, uh, you have a total dealership expense, and it breaks down by department, but new, used, service parts, and body shop if you have one. Um, so where the arrow is now, where it says total variable expense, keep that number in, in your mind at 11.75%, that is of your gross. So based on the benchmarks throughout the country, um, that a member spending, are spending 11.75% of their gross on total variable expense. And then from there, it breaks down within. Same thing for personnel, semi-fixed, um, and so on and so forth. So for those numbers, you've got that, request that from NADA, then head on over to your statement. This is a snapshot from a statement um, where you can see the same thing. So in the very first column there, I think if you tab over, there you go. You need your net sales, your gross profit um, or income, those first two lines right there. And then you're just gonna need the actual dollar amounts for that time frame that month. So there's 83,346 for this dealership. And then I think it might do one more. Yep, so 192 on personnel, right? And so let's flip over to the tool. Perfect, okay. So within here, um, this is basically um, calculating for you. I'm gonna zero these out really fast so you can see this in action. I'm gonna try to zero it out. There we go. So you can see right now, 
I filled these in already prior to the presentation, but at this stage, we just have some elements filled in from expense. And if we go back, let's put in those net, the gross profit and the net sales, right? Enter your expense profile percentages, each category from your, your NADA um, benchmark and to your, your dealership's financials, the actual financials here from page two, it'll calculate the bottom here, your fixed overhead and total expenses. So you guys will get this spreadsheet, we'll yep. send it to you. You can enter, it's just the values in white, right? Just the two columns in white. Precisely. Everything else auto calculates and it shows you where you stand. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. So if this is redundant for you, just hang on for a minute. If this is new to you, a couple of things I wanna point out. One is, at the very bottom here, your total expense, this one, this one brand is 92.4%. It is not 100, you don't want that to be 100%. You don't wanna spend every penny you make, right? You wanna leave some margin for profitability there. So what this shows is this dealer, net sales 5.8 million, gross profit 395K. If you use against the benchmarks, NADAs would have had their variable expense at 46K, personnel 172, so on and so forth their total benchmarked expense is a 365K. This dealership spent 470,000 for the month, which is a $105,000 difference, right? So NADA is lower by $105,000. This is just a visual representation of showing you orange is the dealer, yellow is the benchmark by subcategory here. All the way down to the final one at the very end here, total expenses 470 and 365. We understand there's lots of variation, lots of different reasons why dealerships are in different places, but this at least helps you understand where you stand in comparison to other dealerships of like brand within the industry. Is literally, that's what benchmarks are for. And this is something that can't, shouldn't just be done once a year, it should be done on a regular basis so you know where you stand. Um, so this is the calculator. Um, we can send this to you afterwards and have you share. This is the high level view. Um, but again, you have to fill in what's in the white here with your actuals and it'll calculate the uh, So Zach, on this you. one, um, mm -hmm. the rent and rent equivalent, they're actually under the NADA yep. benchmark. So no need to really look at that too much, but you know, the areas like total fixed overhead expense, total personnel expense, right? Total variable expense, like you mentioned, those are the things that you'd want to drill down into Precisely. to find mm -hmm. out why you're over and what you can do about it. Exactly. And this is always, it's always a function of your gross. Right, so it's how much of your gross are you spending on your expenses? This is, the, it's in the most basic, you know, in the way, most basic way, it's, it's revenue in minus your expenses is the profit, right? So I don't care what industry you're in, if it's a nonprofit, it's still the same way. It's revenue in minus your expenses equals the profitability. And so this is understanding where your expenses are. Um, okay, so that's the template we'll send out to you guys. Um, control tab. Mm -hmm. We'll get over to, our uh, Google Data Studio dashboard. So this is, um, and this is probably one of my favorite parts here is that this is a really nice, simple, clean dashboard that you can see from a monthly standpoint where you stand at a glance, right? Um, so in this particular example, this Chevrolet dealership um, received a grade of a C based on the level of variance that they were from the benchmark. Doesn't mean they're doing poorly, doesn't mean they're not profitable. But from a benchmarking standpoint, um, they were about 74% um, uh, to, I guess, to, to the variance. So they were still um, over by quite a bit. So you'll recognize the same numbers, right? Very similar, or similar numbers, rather. This one had 490K in spend. Nata had them at uh, 267, a variance of two and a quarter almost. And this will show you here each element visually. Total fixed expenses at 232, but they were at 415 almost twice, right? Down below is just a simple table showing that same thing visually. And you think, okay, oh my goodness, we're, you know, we're at 125 at semi-fixed expense, benchmark's 56, we're 70 grand high per month. Um, what in the heck's going on, right? But if you're all in control and that's good, move on to the next thing. In this case, I'd wanna know what's in that 70 grand variance there any one of these categories. Yeah, so this was just a, a cleaner view of, of this calculator that we're sending you. Same intelligence, same data, same calculations mm -hmm. that you input. In this case, we input it into our tool and we'll show you the whole process of what 
we do to help drill down these expenses and you can replicate the same thing without even using this part of the tool. Absolutely, right. yep, okay. it's all done for you. This one you guys should look, at least should look pretty familiar from a format standpoint. So this is basically, we took three months worth of dealership, um, these are actual numbers. So you can see up top, you've got, this is a, um, essentially a, a standardized statement view, right? From expenses only. You got your January actual. I just mean the actual number, the actual dollar amount they spent. Uh, in that category. January's NADA benchmark and the variance of those two. This particular example here, vehicle salespeople comp, based on their gross of that month, they were near $28,000 high to the benchmark. February, 23,000, March, 33,000, right? And you can see each one of these elements where it's shaded gray with orange on there, they're at least $5,000 above, uh, above the benchmark. But you can see here, look, they were in January, 23, almost 24,000, February at nine, March at six, right? Payroll's probably a bad example because it's a, it's a function of payroll being spent, but that gives the example of, so you can see where you stand by month throughout this one. Um, you can scroll down, you can see each category, all the way down to your total expenses in the end here. This is a different set of data, of course. Um, this is total dealership view. Um, it also exists for department view, so if you, say, hey, look, we are high, $53,000 high in supervision. And you're like, oh my gosh, where, where is that? Drill down to each, each department and you can see, oh, look, we're $20,000 high in new, you know, we're $10,000 high in use, we're $8,000 high in, in service, et cetera, et cetera. And you can start drilling in to see where those dollar amounts really exist and if you need to make changes um, to your expenses. So Zach, if somebody watching this webinar wants to do this on their own, this data is just extracted from their financial statements Correct. and put into just organized into a logical manner. Yep. We're displaying it in a way with some calculations and logic that allows you to drill down more quickly. But this is data that you would have in those financial statements. Precisely. Anyway, right. Precisely. Okay. It's going through the tool to basically do the benchmarking for you. Um, I would guarantee most of you are not taking the time to probably go through and go line by line and benchmarking every single one of these by department. It is a uh, painfully long to do it. <laughs> okay. So next couple tabs here, I'm going to show, you know, if you want to start going into uh, a much deeper dive into your actual expenses, um, we, we can help go through expense reviews with you, or you do this on your own, or we help you do, go through it. This is something that gives an example of, of what the tool can, can show here. For one second, it's a bit of a bit of data. So this is probably going to look pretty familiar to whether it's you, if your rentals or CDK or whatever your DMS is. Um, this is basically the most granular level that you can get from your general ledger. So this is the line level detail as your teams are inputting data and processing payments and expenses and so forth. This is coming through um, your accounting detail. This is expense only. There's no income here. So this is taking a look at and seeing, okay, by account, by department, by date, the actual amount, any description with that element, um, any other kind of vendor information and so forth. What we do, this is typically tens of thousands of lines here. We've truncated this down to a lower amount to just for, for the presentation, but you can scroll through or you can filter on your descriptions, the amount, date ranges and so forth um, to look at this in detail. What we will do, what we do do is actually go through this and aggregate all this data into a much more palatable uh, view. It's much, much easier. So you can sit there and go through and ask these questions of, what is this? Do we need this? Can we reduce it? Um, or what are the next steps, right? So from a deep, a deep review like this, you might ask yourself, how do we get to actually save money or contain or control our expenses? This is essentially, um, this is an actual output. We've changed the names to protect the innocent here. And this is the final step. Correct. Right? This is the tracker of all things good uh, in terms exactly. of reductions. So this is basically going through, this is after review or during the review, you're going through and saying, okay, look, we found, um, uh, for example here, uh, Fireside. Um, landscaping, 450 bucks a month. Um, do we need this? Yes, no. How much is that costing us annually? Um, can we work out a better deal? Can we change features, et cetera, et cetera? Um, the green boxes here are items that are higher dollar amounts. So here's an advertiser where 
we were paying $4,000 a month. And sometimes it doesn't seem like very much, you know, if you're spending a lot of money in advertising, four grand or a grand may not seem like a lot, but the question is, well, okay, if four grand is not a much, do you mind if, you know, $48,000 a year much? And some people will go, okay, probably not, right? That's, that's easily a head count or two for me. Right? <clears throat> do we need it? Yes or no? If not, let's review the vendor specifics, see what we can, you know, we can change the contract or renegotiate or cancel. Who owns it? Did we do it? And when does it take effect? So you may be all hot and heavy on this and be super excited. You get through the whole thing. You spend all this time on this. You go through all these, all these, uh, these actions. And the first week you're nailing it and you're getting through all these and you're, you're completing them. Next week rolls around, right? Sales are down. You're focusing on that and you forget about this. So what we're trying to do here is basically make this a way where you can say, let's make sure we, we stay on top of this. So, I'm gonna take a look at it and see, okay, I'm not worried about completed, those are done. I'm worried about those that are in progress or not completed and are owned. Sam has been slacking, so let's see what Sam's up to. Oh, Sam's actually been killing it. He's got one left to do. That's this deal website choice at 1,250 bucks a month. We need it, but we want him to confirm something with CDK. And that's it. So you can go through as an owner, or G, as a GM, a GSM manager, going through this and make sure that you're aware of of where the team stands with us. It's a really good way to actually track. It's simple. I've been through <laughs> so many different, different ways to track projects. We try to make it as simple and clean as possible. Um, and this is one that's become really, really effective in just simply knowing um, essentially what's, what's being affected, who owns it, what is it, do we need it, and when's it gonna be done? Yeah, I think uh, even though I, I talk about gold, it's really about setting targets and knowing where you're going to get to and helping drive your own profitability. So if you had multiple rooftops, you could even set a target of reductions per rooftop and make yep. the team go out and find those things. Or if you have a target, you know, for each rooftop, uh, I think it's a great way to kind of figure out where you're going to end up and you can almost always get there as long as you have yep. reasonable targets. There's a lot of um, opportunity within these line items. Tons. Um, well, I'll recap here in just a second too, but one of the points I want to make is this, that I, I will guarantee you, you will find something every single time. Those four simple examples we gave earlier in the presentation, you find those dozens of times every single time through every time you go through review. Some are common and some are pretty unique, some are pretty fun, um, but you will find redundancies. You'll find as things have changed over the years, things maybe never got canceled or you have three credit apps on your website or you have multiple website vendors doing the same thing. Um, and a lot of times that's when some of the biggest eye-opening actions to go through. And as a GM or as a manager or owner, um, this is probably not where you want to spend a lot of your time. You really should be out driving your team's results, driving performance, taking care of customers, you know, and, and you don't want to spend too much time, obviously, on going through this level of detail. Yeah. The, so we help out a lot. Absolutely. And then uh, I think a lot of dealerships are looking at return on ad spend and, and reviewing their internet marketing vendors. Um, I think, you know, that's a great step. There's still going to be things that you may or may not recognize that, you know, have not been used or worse. You might have multiple vendors uh, competing in the same space, right? For a paid search, you might have a couple of different reputation management folks. You might have different groups posting to Facebook. It's really not a clean way to spend your money, um, especially if you're not tracking, you know, that return on ad spend attribution, but everywhere there's lots of opportunity for you to increase your profit. Absolutely. I'll recap this really fast just for um, real quick. One is back to the dashboard here. This is a high level 30,000 foot view, right? Where do you stand against the benchmark? Um, this is total dealership view, uh, essentially a statement view. So you can see byline item, which is available also in department level. Um, if you choose to, you can go through expense reviews with you. Uh, and that's, that's the down and dirty all the way down to the expense general ledger detail. And from that, um, you get to these expense punch list or action items. Um, one thing I do want to call it here, this is an actual list here. Let me just show you something real fast here. Uh, this item up here, this 43.65K, uh, these are actual dollars that we were able to execute upon. Um, took about three months total in this one, roughly $43,000 a month realized per month, which equates to about half a million dollars a year in just um, actual expense reductions. This does not this does not include a single headcount reduction. This is just managing redundancies and making smarter choices about advertising, 
outside services, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Some things we just could not touch at all, but there are a lot of things in here we certainly could. Um, and that was that equated in half million dollars in expense reductions. Or in revenue <laughs> equivalents, uh, 1.5 million to 2.2 million in sales per month if you're in the 2% or 3% margin uh, range. That's crazy. I yes. Think. Awesome. Okay, so, I'm gonna turn it back over to Sanjay here and thank you very much for your attention on that one. Thanks guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get back to full screen here. Um, really, I think this is the, hopefully the most fun part for you. You guys have heard some interesting things and hopefully you're formulating the process within your heads on how you can get around this. This webinar, 100% is for us to help you guys. We think that uh, waste in any kind of situation is bad. So we're all about making sure you right size your expenses. So Megan, I'd like to, at this time, just open it up to anybody who wants to ask us any questions or if some came in through the, the Q&A, we're happy to chat about it at this point. Awesome, thank you both. Um, everyone, we're now in the Q&A portion of the webinar. So if you haven't already, please submit any questions you have by using that Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. So we already have a few questions lined up here, so let's get started. Once expense optimizations are made, how do we keep them? It's <laughs> a great question. Uh, Sanjay alluded to uh, Six Sigma a couple of times in here, and for those of you that are, are not aware of it, um, one of the stages of Six Sigma, which is uh, the ultimate methodology that focus here is on waste reduction. Um, one of the biggest steps at the very end of going through that methodology is uh, the letter C, which is control. Um, I will tell you it's probably the hardest part. Um, oftentimes what the biggest thing is, one is, is identifying the expenses, um, two is kind of measuring where you're at with it. Um, three is, is determining how, what, what processes need to take place to make the changes. Um, and the last one is controlling them. So brief example, policy, for example, um, we talked about the hundred dollar example. If that costs you $3,000 of sales to recover a hundred dollars, let your service director know or service manager know that, Hey, every time you write off a hundred dollars, we're having to sell $3,000 worth of, um, sales to recover the hundred bucks, right? So it's, it's, it is most oftentimes setting up a process for accountability, whether you're tying managers, uh, pay plans to expense, mm -hmm. um, having regular budget meetings weekly, uh, monthly. So, that, so your team starts understanding, uh, the impact of truly running a business, yeah. not just selling and selling and selling and selling all the time. I think that's a game changer. Like you mentioned, people look at expenses and think, Oh, we're making so much money. Why do they care about a hundred dollars? But, just a simple education on what it takes to get that hundred dollars. I think changes everybody's views and perception mm -hmm. really quickly. Um, I think from a process perspective though, periodic review, uh, making sure you have a, a gatekeeper for any new contracts, right? To make yep. sure before things get signed in the internet space where I spend a lot of time, it's so easy to get somebody to come in and say, Hey, for nine ninety nine a month, you know, you can sell five to 10 more cars. Anybody would take that deal. Right. But, there's so many of those vendors that, you know, get those agreements signed and they keep doing things. And we found dealerships where these vendors are posting cat pictures on Facebook and I like cats, right. But uh, for nine ninety nine a month and then giving away iPads that the dealers were paying for just to get likes. And, you know, it just seems like an innocuous thing, but just really having some kind of controls in place like Zach talked about yep. to make sure before you take on new expenses, Let's make sure you stem the tide and have a, a gatekeeper to make sure those are valid and necessary and they're actually going to help grow your business. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. awesome. Good question. All right. Another question here. What controls are most important to have in place for expense optimization? I think the biggest one, am I entering this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think one of the biggest ones is just, it's the recognition of where you stand, right? And not, I don't mean that as a pun, but essentially that's kind of what this is, right? It's understanding um, the exception, right? So if, if the rest of the industry is spending $10,000 a month on this particular category, and you're 15, um, maybe you think 15 is great for you, but that, that may be too much. So understanding, first of all, um, where you're high and roughly, roughly how much you're high or low um, helps you identify that. So the control may be a visual one um, where you pull up your report and you spend this and the benchmark is, is this 
and your spend is bright red because you're, you're in the red there. Um, that's oftentimes, I think as human beings and as fast as we are moving in automotive dealership space, uh, just being fair, we probably don't have the attention span oftentimes to be able to focus on that all day long. And so um, sometimes those, those quick, clean visuals are sometimes the easiest things to show um, how to control it. It's that it's the stop sign, don't, <laughs> don't go this direction, right? Green is good, red is bad, um, and on to the next topic kind of thing. Yeah. Measurements, I think, equals exactly. control. <laughs> so yeah, good one. That was good. What are some of the things you find that dealerships do best and what areas do they need the most help with? Do best and need the most help in. From an expense standpoint, I think this is from my own probably my own experience, is that I think the dealerships um, as opposed to other, you know, larger corporate, you know, corporate entities, they take care of the problem quickly. Um, it's, I think it's a very fast transactional environment where you see, you see the problem, they fix it very, very quick. Um, and that becomes the behavior oftentimes. Um, sometimes you have these uh, large organizations where they see a problem, they'll talk about, you know, solving the problem for a long time and six months later, nothing has really changed. Um, so I think, the freedom you have to be able to make um, change so quickly is, is really a benefit. Um, I think it's also hard too, because oftentimes things are changing so fast that you never really stop and benchmark and say, holy smokes, where are we at here? You, you feel like you're just you're going, 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 going. So it's- Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. Quick decision-making and to follow on that, I think a lot of dealerships have very smart people in charge that have had a lot of success. And they're used to making those decisions based on visceral uh, reactions, so gut decisions, and served a lot of people well. But I do think that the best dealerships, as we move forward, are going to use analytics for everything. So, you know, having the analytics on benchmark where you stand financially, understanding your contracts, understanding the analytics around return on ad spend. I think you know there's a significant amount of spend on marketing, uh, co-opt or not every month. And it's important to understand what that landscape looks like. How much, you know, involvement do you need in each of these spaces to have a proper presence digitally? So I think, um, you know, beyond those quick decisions, which have proven successful in the past, I think the focus on analytics and understanding what's going on in the space, I think the dealerships and the personnel that, take the time to elevate themselves by getting educated, you know, attending webinars, uh, not just ours, you know, reading, doing things. I think those dealerships are going to excel significantly. So I think they can do that better. And, and the best ones are already starting to do that. Agreed. Agreed. Awesome. Thank you both uh, so much for this presentation. Uh, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar and um, please look out for an email this afternoon that'll include um, a link to a recording of today's session and a link to more upcoming uh, digital dealer webinars and uh, on the screen um, here's how you can contact um, Notion at the end if you have any questions there's an email and a phone number um, and thank you guys so much thanks everybody it was uh, fun you. to do this very fun <laughs>